Well, here's something a little different. I've actually installed a Windows pre-release codename version on a real computer. I had problems installing it on virtual machines, so I thought I have an old Windows 2000 laptop uh, from about the year 2000. I was hoping that that would be compatible with Windows Whistler, which was the XP pre-release. Just wanted to uh, try it out and see if it worked, and much to my surprise, everything worked, even the display and the audio drivers. So uh, enjoy this rare look at Windows Whistler working properly on some hardware from the time. It's not the fastest thing in the world, but yeah, it's a Pentium 3. But it does actually work. Might have to uh, see if I can. <laughs> hmm. Forgive me for a moment. I'm going to see if I can adjust this a bit better. Perhaps turn the light off so it's not as glaring. There's the uh, quite minimalistic boot screen, well, in comparison to 2000, anyway. Uh, let's just see. There we go. Welcome. It's even kept my password from the 2000 install, which is pretty handy. A very different welcome screen to Windows 2000, but kind of similar to XP. And of course the 2000 start sound. You probably can't pick it up on the camera, but the uh, the buttons and the, the taskbar is slightly different. Um, it's kind of different texture. Um, of course, the huge difference is the start menu. Now, those of you that have used Windows have probably not seen one like that, except for in Windows XP, but even so, it was a different design entirely. Uh, I do quite like the theme they have going on here with the different uh, with the squares. Much nicer than the Windows XP theme, which I wasn't really a fan of. Uh, so, an explorer window, it's kind of what you'd expect it to look like. It's kind of exactly like Windows 2000. Um, can't remember if all this was in 2000, I think it was. Um, and of course different colours as well. Uh, so you have this box here which says comments, I'm guessing that was for, uh, for feedback. I'm getting red lights on my camera, so I might not be able to do this for very long. Yeah, entering your beta ID, which I don't have. And of course the other thing is the file a bug report. Which if you spotted something wrong with Windows Whistler, you would uh, kindly tell them. Obviously, I cannot do that. Uh, and of course it does also contain the very first version of Windows Movie Maker, which was also included with Windows Millennium Edition. And yes, you do get the cool music. There you go. Again, if you've used Windows ME, you've already seen that. And the running compatibility mode works a bit differently. You double click on this, uh, and then you choose which version, 95 or NT, browse for the application file. Uh, let's just say that. This one won't work, I've already tried it. And then you click Run, as opposed to right-clicking it. Uh, I do have a version of Merc which will run on here. Um, this version. So I can chat on IRC with Windows Whistler. <laughs> uh, I do actually have a PCMCIA Ethernet adapter, so it's perfectly plausible that I'd be able to do that. And here we go, let's just shut this down now. I mean, if you've seen Windows 2000, you've seen this. There's not much that's different, it's just an interesting little version of Windows. It's funny to see the uh, XP development process. Uh, I shall log off first so you can have a look at the, um, the welcome screen. There you go. And... Uh, we have to turn off computer here. 
which we will now do. Turn off. Hmm, what will die first, the computer or my battery? I should point out that this computer was this slow running 2000 as well. Ah, oh, that wonderful old sound. Well, there you go. There is a look at a obscure version of Windows running on actual hardware. Hope you enjoyed.